autopilot. I, as I mentioned, spend probably about 90% of my highway driving on autopilot. And I'll mention a couple observations. <clears throat> Number one, autopilot while at lower speeds. Say you're in traffic bumper to bumper. I was coming up the Sierra and there was some crash or something and traffic was all backed up. I personally think that that is like a power case for autopilot. Like slow driving, you don't have to worry about the car disengaging and like flying off the highway, which is, you know, I don't ever hear of that happening, but there's some bigger consequence if you're driving fast, the car disengages, you have to take over versus going slow and creeping. I think that slow commuting thing is awesome. And one of the reasons I bought this car or any car that could do lane keep uh, autopilot sort of functionality is once I once COVID's over and our office is open and I go back to commute and I'm going up and down the peninsula of the Bay Area to the South Bay back to San Francisco daily or whatever it's going to be. Uh, I really wanted a car that I could put on autopilot or lane keep and just have it slow down, speed up, and in this case, like kind of follow the highway down. I love that. I think it's awesome. State of California, I'll always have my hands on the wheel. I'll always be paying attention. And it'll be like there's no autopilot because I'm totally irresponsible. Looking forward to the day where I can actually take my hands off the wheel, full autopilot that's totally legal and the car just drives and commute. I love driving, but I don't love commuting. I'll tell you that. If I didn't have to commute ever again for the rest of my life, that would be like the world's perfect life. So the slow uh, autopilot is really good, works well, lane keeps, whatever. As you go a little faster, you do have to pay you know, I, I made another video about, like, should autopilot exist? And the conclusion that I had in that is it's not that autopilot drives itself, and it's not that you drive and autopilot's there to correct you in case of an emergency. It's neither of those things. Autopilot is just a second driver. So if you can accept the fact mentally that two drivers are better than one, and that's where the safety enhancement comes from, then it works really well. And so autopilot is moving the wheel, but you have to kind of move along with it without forcing it. So it does take a little getting used to where if you drive too actively, it disengages you from autopilot. Like if you steer the wheel too much, it'll disengage you. Um, if you don't do it enough, you get these little nasty grams up on the display that say, you know, apply some pressure to the, or what does it say? It's like apply pressure the steering wheel or, or turn the wheel just a little bit, but not enough to pull it out of, of autopilot. I actually thought, and I think I was wrong, I actually thought that the steering wheel had pressure sensors on it, where like if you grabbed it at 10 and two, that was the only position that you could tell the autopilot that you were actually paying attention. What it appears, and it seemed like five and seven wasn't working, what it appears to me is that that's not the case. There's not like some touch sensitive screen like on an iPhone or it's like, it's not, you don't just squeeze it and it knows you're there. My sense is there must be, and again, I'm not an engineer or whatever. My sense is there must be in the steering column or in the steering wheel somewhere, some magnetically controlled mechanism that can sense like how, how much force your hand, and I just got a little warning as I took my hands off, how much pressure against what the car is doing are you applying such that it knows you're paying attention? And that sounds a little weird, but I have, you know, if your hand's not on the wheel and it's sensing no resistance, like you're not fighting it even in the littlest of ways, it knows your hands are off the wheel and it'll put up a little message that says, please apply some steering pressure, whatever the wording is. And so that's quite interesting. So I'm, I'm noticing that if I'm doing a five and seven drive, I, I just have to apply that pressure and it doesn't bother me. The slightly odd thing in the extreme. So if you apply too much pressure, it pops you out of autopilot and then you have to like re-engage. The opposite kind of weird thing is if you don't apply, like I can have my hands on the wheel or one hand, say I'm eating chips, pop chips are my favorite. I've got a colleague of mine gave me a care package filled with pop chips. I've been eating pop chips. They're the world's greatest thing. If I could eat pop chips, probably it's my only food source for the rest of my life. I'd be totally happy. Uh, so I've been eating a lot of pop chips and all one-handed, or I drink some water. 
And um, the car would be like, apply pressure to the steering wheel. And I'm like, it's kind of a drag. I mean, what's the deal? Is my left hand, because I'm eating with my right hand, is my left hand so stable that the car doesn't even know I'm there? Is that a skill? Is there some way I could monetize that steady left hand? Um, probably not. There's, it's probably one of those useless functions in the modern world. Other than for your car to send you a little nasty gram telling you to do something with it. So I'm finding that I do have to apply this pressure to keep the car in autopilot. So, you know, not the end of the world, but you got to kind of figure out how to, to, how to engage the car without kind of crossing the line. So that's one thing you have to learn how to do. Next thing I thought was interesting, when I was in traffic, the car will, and a lot of cars will do this, where it, you'll say, keep me five cars distant from the car in front of me, or three, and you can set it. I've noticed when I put the car on adaptive cruise control, which is not autopilot, it just like stops or slows down or speeds up. There are times where the traffic is so slow where it doesn't make sense to have car, five car lengths between you because either people are cutting in, which makes total sense, or the people behind you are probably like, dude, why are there, why is there so much space between you and the car in front of you? Like, can we get some, like, get closer to the car in front of you? I have kind of noticed that when I'm on this adaptive cruise control, the car will slow down because I've told it to give me five car lengths. But if in that moment I try to hit the gas to get a little closer, the brake pedal will kind of do this like kind of thing. And I don't know if that's by design. It almost seems a little floppy, like something's happening and then the brake pedal is just kind of bouncing up and down semi-rapidly. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know, Tesla, like, ideally you would program the car to know, like, okay, he's in traffic, he's going slow, and he wants to get closer. I don't know if that should change the car distance thing automatically or it should just be ignored. And when I go back to speed, it brings me back to five. But that's, I mean... It's kind of a non-issue, maybe, but this click, 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 you, you, you see that you're kind of fighting the car a little bit, which is interesting. But then the other thing, I had my first ghost braking today while on autopilot was going, I don't know, it was a couple hours ago. I think it was, it just descended the Sierra Nevada mountains. I'm going to do a lane change here. Turn around this camper trailer. Um, came down the mountains, was on a pretty flat road. Uh, driving on autopilot, looking forward, hands on the wheels, and then the car just went slow down real quick. No good reason at all. Now, fortunately, like it didn't slam on the brakes, but it, I don't know if it disengaged and then regenerative braking really just applied or if it applied the brakes, but the car slowed pretty quick with no warning. And there was no car in front of me. Fortunately, there was no car behind me because if there had been a car as close to me then as there is right now, and I've got a car right on my tail, you probably see him. Uh, I don't know. I probably would have been rear-ended. Not ideal. I'm not sure where that comes from. When I was at the charging station in Lovelock talking to all these lovely people, uh, I was talking to one gentleman who said his car has done that before and noticed that it tends to happen either where you have pavement color changes, a little odd, or if you go under an overpass and then there's a sudden large shadow, something like that. As far as I understand, this car uses visual cues for autopilot rather than LIDAR or, I guess, object detection. Don't quote me on any of that. I don't know anything. Please put in the comments below that I'm totally wrong or I don't know what I'm talking about because, frankly, I don't. But you hear or read things. Uh, I didn't really like that experience, I have to be honest, having your car giving over some trust to the vehicle to drive itself and then having it apply the brakes assertively is not the sort of experience I enjoy. Um, no doubt, again, Tesla has probably heard this a million times and they probably have engineers trying to reverse engineer it all and figure it all out and program and all the rest of the stuff that the wizards do. Looking forward to an update where that doesn't happen, hopefully, at least in some extreme case that kind of makes a little sense. So that's that. Um, anything else about autopilot? I like it. I think it's great. As long as I drive with it, uh, it works well. 
One thing I would say I'm not in love with is if I'm on autopilot, I'm kind of meh on this. I don't think I've made my decision totally yet, but I'm a little neutral negative on it. When you're in autopilot and you're driving, if you disengage, so autopilot is lane keep and also adaptive cruise control. It'll steer for you and then brake and gas based on where the car is and where you're If I'm on autopilot, and for some reason I choose to disengage it or it disengages, but if I disengage it to change lanes or whatever, it maintains adaptive cruise control, which I'm not sure I like that. I don't know if there's a setting in the car that I can do. In my opinion, if the car drops out of autopilot, I think it should drop out of adaptive cruise control as well. Like, because in my mind, the problem with the way it works now, where it stays in adaptive cruise control, like, I, in my mind, I may think, like, I'm getting over, and it's dropping out, so the whole system should shut off, and then if I care, I would re-engage either at adaptive cruise control or with full autopilot. But it doesn't do that. So it's in this kind of interesting thing where you think it shuts off, but it only shuts off 50% of the functionality. I don't know. Maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe I'll get over it. I, I'm kind of a black and white kind of person. Maybe this whole autopilot lifestyle is going to be some shades of gray and color. I don't know. That kind of freaks me out. Um, I'll have to figure it out. Maybe the more it happens, the more I get used to it, and the more I'll just know that I popped it out of cruise control and I'm still on, on adaptive cruise control, and it's still going pretty, pretty quick. Uh, that's something. Oh, one other scenario that I saw today. I don't exactly know when you're supposed to put autopilot on, but I'm kind of pushing it. Was uh, stopped in the middle of Nevada to take a picture of my car in the desert, but it was a lovely shot. I'm coming back on the highway on the on-ramp, and I thought, okay, I'm on this on-ramp. Let me put it in autopilot. There were lanes that you could see lane markers on both sides. And then as I'm coming up to the freeway, cars are at speed. I mean, speed limit in Nevada is 80 miles an hour, so people are trucking. Um, I'm coming up. And my lane is about to merge with the highway, and there is a semi coming right in front of me, and it just barely passes me, and my Tesla is coming right into the lane. Now, it wasn't going to hit it, like I could tell that, but it brought me in probably within like 10, 15 feet, maybe 20 feet, I don't know, of the bumper of the semi in front of me, and I was like, whoa, that's close, that's, that's on the bumper. And presumably, if all of the sensors had come in right behind it, it would have sensed that the car was really in front of me. I didn't know if it was going to like apply the brakes again, or if it was just going to slowly pull me back to the five car lengths, which I have it on the freeway always set up. But I was like, I don't know, Tesla, that would be another edge case scenario where it would be better, I don't know, if the car could slow down, if it senses some large object, but I'm sure that's very sophisticated to try to program a car to do, but... So, you know, I just applied the brakes, popped out a, a autopilot, and I took over. It's not a big deal, but um, I'll be very interested when full self-driving comes out, which I've not paid for, to see people's reviews of what are these user scenarios when your car is doing really sophisticated stuff with all sorts of moving objects at high speed, tons of variables, and how it handles it. Um, I think the technology is awesome. I'm still blown away by what the car can do. Uh, I'll probably be like totally mind blown when full self-driving comes out and cars are just doing their own thing without any human intervention. I think it's just crazy. Um, so that's that. So that's my video today on uh, driving across America, charging, supercharging, and then also some of the wackiness of autopilot uh, and how that all works. I'm currently in the middle of well, I love the desert, so I think this whole area is really beautiful. Um, if I kind of look out the window here, there's a very long train to my left, and uh, tons of desert on my right, if you can see that. Uh, I think the desert's gorgeous. Uh, love this drive. Just love everywhere in the world, basically. I just think it's an amazing planet. And I have a car now, and at least where there's electricity, I can go. So uh, I intend to see a lot of it in this vehicle. Uh, stay out of trouble, and uh, I'll see you maybe from Idaho or Wyoming. Take care.